All right, so let's try to actually speedrun a web app in Golang. So my goal would be to have really basic API that you can uh, maybe you know imagine that we access a database that would be like a dictionary, like a mapping, and um, use maybe HTMX to have a button that does something, and uh, also use templates with uh, HTML. So the backend framework that I decided to use is Gin because this is the one that I use the most. So I'm the most familiar with it. So let's actually create like a repo for this thing. So I have go speedrun, obviously, and let's uh, go inside. So the first thing is to init the web app. I just gonna do like speedrun. The next thing is to add our dependencies. And you know, the one that I would say to add is this gene gonic, right? So we add it. The next thing is to use air and air is a really cool feature it does uh, hot reloading for web apps so well i guess for any kind of app right so you just have to install it so go install this is the command i already have it so i don't really have to do it again and then we can initialize our config file for air and one thing that I think it's maybe important to do is to set this stop on error to true. In the past, this thing kind of screw me over a couple of times because when you have an error, it tries to just rerun the old version that worked. So you are not gonna see, probably you're not gonna see the error, right? You're just gonna see the server is starting and you're gonna say, oh, it, it works. So let me just play around with it. And it's not the latest version or at least it's the older version. And um, I mean, it's better to just not restart if you have an error, honestly. I, I mean, this should be like a default feature, but uh, you know, it is what it is. The next thing would be maybe to change this to like, usually I like to put my executable things in CMD. I saw that this is like a go practice. I don't know. I just try to follow that because why not? Uh, it just looks similar to other, let's say, go projects so it's easy to find examples and stuff so you know if it looks like other projects it's easier for you to search in other projects as well or you know other people to follow your code anyway so first thing is to do hello world as usual so let's print ln almost did uh, the rest so hello world right so oh and afterwards you can just run air it will pick up the config and you know, run everything. But if you uh, run, you can also run it like this. Okay, perfect. So let's let's keep it running. So the next thing is to, you know, I'd always say that it's easier to just go to the documentation of what we are trying to use and just try to steal as much as possible for the most part. So for example, this would be like the router. Let's call it router. Probably are familiar with this kind of stuff from, I don't know, like JavaScript or Python and so on. And the next thing is, let's try to add this ping function, I guess, like ping uh, route. So we are gonna do like get, and then let's call it ping. This is gonna be like our um, health check for the app. See that it started to run. And here um, in the thing they use like I think it's called anonymous function, but or lambda, I don't know if, how it's called, but let's do our handler separately. I feel like if you do everything in main, it's gonna become really cluttered, but you know, it can have its benefits. If you are like doing only one route, probably you can just go ahead. So the next thing is to just do this function. And I guess in gene, the functions don't really return anything. So you just return stuff by mutating this C variable, this context. So if we do something like C dot string, we can return a string, right? We set like the result of the um, call, the get call to ping to be a string. So first thing is to use HTTP status code. Okay. So everything was fine and we can send back okay or something. So now if we go here, we can see that it compiles, right? And it started to run on port 8080. So we can just um, ping it. 
and we get back, back OK. And then in the logs, we can see that the route was called with status 200. So everything works fine, right? So next thing would be to add, let's say, a page, like HTML page. And to do that, um, obviously, it's not going to be like right here how to do it, but um, we have to use a templates, right? So we can create a templates folder just to have it. And the uh, name of the function is something with globe, if I remember correctly, load HTML globe. And I would use this one instead of HTML files. This one, you specify the file names uh, yourself and globe you can specify a directory or I guess a globe like this and it's gonna search for all the files in this directory right in them I guess now we have to also spell it correctly templates okay and this thing uh, I don't think it returns anything but now we should have our templates but obviously we have to create some templates and uh, let's do one for Let's do like saying hello to a user. That's pretty interesting. We can have a snippet for this thing. And let's say that we are going to do like a P tag with hello. And the syntax for this templating language, which honestly I don't know how it's called, but go, go lang. I guess it's in the standard library, which is really cool. Template HTML. Because you like have pretty much like Go is a language made for web apps because it has everything in the standard library so it's I mean except gene but I guess you can also use um, a standard library for that um, but uh, you know I, I just started with gene so I just went with it so yeah I guess template whatever so let's say we are gonna use name this is like a variable that we are gonna pass in and this page should display hello and then the name right but we don't have anything yet that uses that template. So let's just add hello, right? And let's do a hello method. So first thing is the hello method. Again, gene negotiate. Mm, I think context. Not sure what negotiate does, but uh, whatever. So let's say now that we instead of returning a string or json or whatever we return html right http status code okay and here we need to specify the name of the page so you know even if we skipped the names here we still have to use the names here so in the end we still use the name and, and uh, yeah i guess it is what it is it's fine and as i said we have to provide the name so let's um use gene h which is like uh, mapping but i mean i guess it's just uh, type def for this thing so like uh, okay and we can just say name and then cool name i guess so we can see that it recompiled so everything is fine and if you have like errors what is going to happen by setting that uh, option to true it's just gonna not recompile so if we go to the hello page it's not even running right so that's that's one thing that i wish i knew from the beginning when started to use air but okay so we can see that it actually replaced this name with what we provided here but um, would be more interesting if we were able to put the name like this wouldn't it so like uh, one neat way of doing this, which I think I like more than uh, taking, because you can take each variable from the URL or from the body of the request individually, but I like to build a structure called like, for example, hello query. So this is gonna be a structure and we are gonna have a name, right? Which I think you have to do a string and then we can use a tag Honestly, I don't know if it's called a tag, but um, that's how I call it. So it's an URI parameter, right? It's in the URI and it's going to be called name, right? So it, now I guess we also have to use binding required just to throw errors if it's not there. But now uh, Gene will know that this thing refers 
to this right so we can actually just uh, create query right and initialize it with nothing and then let's do like error is equal to c dot should bind uri right? and here we have to pass in the reference to our query and if error is not nil then we have to abort with error right http status is gonna be 500 i guess mm, status well i guess bad request maybe okay and uh, the error right i mean i don't know just pass the error whatever it's only for playing around purposes but again one thing that also um you know tricked me in the beginning was that i thought that this is gonna just return and everything is fine but you actually have to not forget to do return actually i think we can just do no but yeah you have to return it right like the abort in the name made me think that oh it's gonna return or i don't know why i thought that but that's what i thought for some reason but uh, yeah this these functions just mutate c right they change it and you have to return at the right point so that's how uh, this framework i guess works okay so now by i guess judging by this thing we should have the query containing the name so we can just pass in uh, the query here right and honestly like this i think should work so if we say hello alex is gonna you know, do that but i think it's not really a best practice to send this object here although maybe i'm wrong maybe in golang it's fine but you know like i come from javascript world maybe sometimes not not that much though and you know probably i would recommend to have another structure maybe for the template right maybe you are gonna use this template in other handlers as well so maybe you can have like a structure here instead of doing this dictionary or you know if you feel like it you can just send a query in but maybe it's more let's say not necessarily a best practice but it's more readable if you have like another structure like hello template input or something right so people when look at when are gonna look at your code they're gonna see oh it's that's the input the template so if they need to change it they'll know where to look for it like because otherwise it's hard to change this thing okay anyway so um, now we should have hello right that's pretty neat and the next thing obviously on my list would be you know adding htmx to our thing to make it like do something so let's go to our template add the link to htmx here obviously we are gonna just steal the example and i think what's pretty cool like what really or i guess you know maybe i haven't used templates enough but i was like whoa you can do that so let's see if you also have that <laughs> reaction but you can actually use the like variable inside of this url so you know pretty neat right anyway i, I mean maybe it's just me but i i thought that's cool okay so let's not destroy our button right let's do an hx target which is gonna uh, like when we are gonna click the button like how hmx works if you don't know is you you have these css like things and for example this thing will if we click on the button it's gonna do a post to this url then we can specify some target which let's see what happens if we specify the target i guess uh, target and something called hx swap which we are gonna set to inner so i guess you know the hx target by seeing this pound symbol here makes us think that it's gonna be like an id so let's uh, do a div target right and this hx swap like inner html you know now if you think about it it's gonna change what's inside of this div and what is uh, what it's gonna use for that um, value obviously it's gonna be the return of this uh, post request right so it's gonna change the target 
the inner HTML of the target with the result from the post. So, you know, funnily enough, we can send like the, how is it called, like the image alert thing, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so we have the, let's see if we have it. So we should have a button, doesn't do anything because we don't have the API click, right? So let's actually add our API click. So we have to use a post API click and we also have the name which is pretty interesting and let's call it click okay so the next uh, thing would be to also do the same thing as for hello because it's the same pretty much the same thing and I would use two different structures although they are the same for now just because maybe if you change this one you know and this doesn't change then what do you do about the structure maybe it's better to have one structure for each handler I think I uh, do click at least you know in, in my bigger project that's how I did it like I used one structure for each handler and it worked anyway so when we are gonna do click right we need to parse the query so let's do click query do whatever whatever and then let's use let's create our database All right, so database is just gonna be a map from string to int and initialize it with nothing okay so Let's just say that we have some uh, some data that we take from the database, which is just an integer. So it's gonna be database. And here we are gonna use our name, right? Then we increment the data. We set data back to data. And now we just have to return the data. So we can do that again with context string. We just say that everything was fine. So status okay. And you now I guess you can do stuff like percentage d data to because string also does formatting. I think it just does format anyway. So now if we go to our page, refresh it, and start clicking it, we are gonna see like that thing increases. And if we switch to uh, some other thing like max, I don't know, it's gonna restart, right? If we go back to Alex, it's gonna continue from there, right? So pretty cool right like we managed to actually speed on a really simple go web app so you know i guess you know, i don't even know how long it took maybe like 15 minutes i think or more like 20 minutes but you know i, I also rambled a lot so yeah well i guess um you know that's that's pretty much it right like we are able to ping our web app we have like a page made with html so in the templates we have the HTML page that the web app is gonna return and we can also change some data on the web app for uh, our users. So I would say that you know, this is a pretty good starting point if you are trying to learn um, web development like backend with Go, like trying to build like something really simple. Maybe, you know, start from this like example and add your own stuff to it. You know, can be anything, maybe you can do it like a real database instead of this thing and then you can come up with other stuff but you know i would say that this is the best way to do like start with something like stupid and then uh, start to add your own ideas to it um, some way so i guess that's it for this one and see you in the next one